Good afternoon. We are live here with Quantum Leap, and uh, we have a special guest on today, Roberta Guys. And uh, um, Corey actually knows Roberta better than I do. We, we had a good conversation, and um, you know, I'm getting to know her, but we're excited to have her today. And I know Corey and I, we usually do a check in, but we can save that for the second segment, Corey. If, but if you don't mind just introducing yourself and telling us how you know Roberta. <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, Corey Knott here with Take Wing Coaching, a business coach. And today we have Roberta Guys, who I first met through the Institute for Management Consultants. And I'll just put a quick plug in there that uh, we both are very active with that organization and suggested for anyone who feels that they consult the management or would like to work with the kind of people who consult the management, which is how I first got involved. And uh, it's a great organization for uh, becoming more professional in that regard. And then Roberta was the past president. She helps, well, she does pretty much run the, uh, the, the breakfast meeting that we have once a month to which anyone is invited to come and attend. And then I learned more about what Roberta does as a uh, marketing, a reputation expert and hired her to help me develop my reputation because it's so easy to hide in the, in the shadows and then you know, not bring out what we truly do. So I believe that's a, what, what Roberta does. She's helping me quite a lot in that. And I'm sure it's a lot of kicking and screaming for me though. Um, so uh, probably less so than some of the people she's talked about, but ultimately that's what she does. She helps them build a reputation knowing that uh, a lot of times it, it's really getting out of her comfort zone and doing that. So I, I'd see her as a, as a consultant and a coach, though she often doesn't use that word. There is a lot of uh, helping us become better at what we are. And with so I uh, highly suggest learning more about what Roberta does on her LinkedIn profile, on her webpage, and uh, maybe getting to know her directly. Uh, come to IMC. You can meet her there. Excellent. Yeah. And I, I saw that she actually does some ice swimming in the bay. We, oh, yes. uh, that's on her website. A great analogy for stepping out of your comfort zone. We're actually putting on a um, something this week um, on Rotary with businesses. We're calling it Shark Tank, so I don't want to raise any fears there, but there's no sharks out there in the bay. Most of them are outside uh, the Golden Gate. I know there are some seals out there, but it's still kind of scary. Um, well, Roberta, we're going to get to you. I know you you requested uh, just to say a few words about re Ukraine. I know that's something on all of our minds, and you know I have a lot of thoughts on that subject, but I'm kind of not saying too much publicly, needless to say, I'm sure Corey and I and you and, you know, we're all very supportive of Ukraine who's just getting, got attacked by a bully, essentially, but um, I'll, I'll let, let, turn that over to you, whatever you want to say about re Ukraine, feel free, and, um, and just tell us about your story as well. Uh, I'll do that, David, and thank you so much for giving me the space and, and welcome to everybody who is watching uh, or, or listening in. And even, I, I hope that by the time that you do get to this program, uh, that Ukraine is whole and is, continues to be a sovereign nation. It's not really looking that way right now. But the reason I mentioned to David and Corey just now that I wanted to say something is that I found myself being what you might call an ultra sensitive, that I, I find myself just weeping constantly and feeling this frustration about not being able to do anything but also reminding me that way back in my youth, uh, I'd immigrated to Israel and Israel at times was a war zone. And so whenever I hear the sirens go off, if I'm watching a program and see the, hear the sirens going off in Ukraine, it just makes my hair stand on end. And uh, I just really sort of wanted to get this off my chest and perhaps off yours as well, because um, everybody takes in this kind of thing and it affects them in a very different way. I found myself being very distracted and having to really compartmentalize myself to come and you know, do something like this or, or run a meeting like I did this morning. And so just wanted to put that out there and that if you have similar kinds of feelings, and, and even if you don't, that's okay. What, however you feel is okay. But if, if you do find yourself in, in, in that state, just st you know, stay with it and, um, all we can do is is really at this point hope for the best and put out our best feelings for those who are suffering and anybody you know who's Ukrainian or has Ukrainian friends, just reach out to them. Well, thanks so much for that, uh, David and Corey. So, whew. 
switching gears, recompartmentalizing. Um, you asked me to tell my story and what I do, so I'll start with what I do. And Corey, you gave me a great introduction to that indeed. Um, I'm what's sometimes known as a personal branding expert or help helps people rep, uh, shape their reputation. But really what that is all about, at least the way I position it or present it, is working with deep experts, professionals, people who want to be known as a leading authority or sought after authority in their field of expertise. So what does that look like? It means that media are quoting you, you're contributing articles and getting them published, great to publish on your website and other places, but now you're also being noticed and getting your articles uh, placed in influential publications. You're on podcasts like this and perhaps even some radio programming that goes out to, to broad audiences. I mean, it's, it's the whole gamut. And then if you plan to write a book, I'm in right now, just started finally writing my book on purpose-driven uh, personal branding and building your reputation. It, some of us come to it a little bit later in life. It really is never too late, but that will also help as your calling card for demonstrating that you really know some things, that you have some ideas that you want to present to the world, you want to make people better off with those ideas. And that's where the purpose driven comes into all of this. So that's it about what pretty much in a nutshell, what I do. Yeah. And now so... you want to know my story, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How the hell did I get here? In a very strange way. I was not a good learner when I was a kid and I never finished high school. In fact, none of my immediate family finished high school. So when I came to this country in my mid twenties, surprise, surprise, I hadn't finished high school. I had no marketable skills, but it didn't even occur to me that something was wrong until I bumped into somebody by the name of Bill Abbott. And you know how sometimes you can look back and there's a hero in your life? Bill's no longer with us, but Bill Abbott was the hero in my life. He said to me, Roberta, if you want to get anywhere in life, you've got to get an education. Now, coming from not being a good learner, I, thought, <laughs> I put up the good fight, but he won me over. And I went and got my GED and then was able to go on to, and the GED is, you know, your adult high school equivalency. And from there, I was able to go on and get a college degree in radio and television and worked as a video producer for about 15 years or so. You know, won lots of awards and it had a really good time of doing that. But what really was the most important thing, again, my story, you know, what, how do we get from there to here, is that I had to learn how to think critically. And I know there's a lot of buzz around critical thinking or what that really means. But it's, to my mind, critical thinking is being able to take some facts or some issues or thoughts connect the dots and make sense of them, and then be able to present your ideas around that, to take a stand on it. And you do that over, believe it or not, you're doing that over and over again throughout the day to, to, to varying degrees. But that was something that came very, very hard to me. And I had to learn, like I said, how to do it. I had to learn how to learn. Well, I uh, was a video producer, created this awesome, video it was right as video was turning from from analog to digital keys to weight training an instructional video on how to lift weights it was a wonderful 80 minute program i sold tens of thousands of copies which may sound very impressive but when you compare to jane fonda and others who were selling their exercise videos at the time in the mega millions it was like mm, not so great but still good but it was my entree into marketing and as a result of that I started marketing other people's videos and from there transitioned into marketing individuals. And so here we are today. Great. That, that reminded me of why we connected so well, your broadcast experience and some of the things that you do are very similar to what I do in some respects, although I mostly focus on video. Now you kind of focus on the full package and, um, I was going to apologize to Cora. I was actually going to let him lead off the interview with you because <laughs> he knows you better because he's been working with you. But Cora, did you want to jump in now or do you want sure. me to? Yeah, I can, I can ask you. So, so Roberta, what makes you unique in your marketing? 
or as a marketer, which it, it just doesn't feel right, but okay, <laughs> to use that word. Everyone is unique, Corey, you know that. <laughs> well, even, I think I think even twins, well, fraternal twins are unique, right? Uh, yeah, maybe not, but what uh, makes your business not, unique? Yeah. What, what makes my business, what makes me unique? No, seriously. Uh, David, you kind of gave it away, uh, my secret sauce, which is I do swim in San Francisco Bay which is very cold even in summer. And when I say cold, average 62 degrees in summer and 50 degrees in winter. So, so for most swimmers, it's like, oh, take me away from this stuff, too cold, even if I love swimming. Um, what really makes it harder for me is that I'm a slow swimmer. So that means to get from here to there takes longer and you're in the cold longer. That means you have to have more either um, resilience and you've acclimatized better, or you've got to have a mindset. And so really for me, it, it's mindset that helps me get in the water and, and stay in it. So if you've been, if, when you're starting out for the first time, or if you've been away from the water for a while, when you first get your toes in, it really does, it really does hurt. But as you do it, each time it gets easier and easier. And so the analogy that I like to say is for, our businesses and for developing our personal brand and doing all these things that sometimes, you know, strike fear in the hearts of people. It's like, how could I reach out to the media? I'm not sure that I have anything to say and I have nothing different to say and I'm not unique and other people have already said it, you know, excuse, excuse, excuse. The swimming, the analogy is it puts, if you give yourself, if you put yourself into the mindset and intention of wanting to do something, you are actually able to push through the temporary pain and get to the other side and get to where you want to be. Sometimes you might not arrive there right away, so you, you just do it again. And each time it just gets that little bit easier. And if, and if you've had any intention in your life in the past, you know that once you intend to do something, you're likely to succeed. And so it's exactly the same thing with, um, well, with the swimming, but with working on your reputation to be known as a thought leader, as a sought after authority in your field. So the other thing that I think that really um, helps me to, well, makes me unique is using this mindset to work with my clients to help them build their confidence. I don't know if it's COVID or what's happening, something in the air maybe, but almost all of the clients I have right now to one degree or another have mentioned or I've noticed some really serious confidence issues and some have even mentioned that they suffer from imposter syndrome and I'm able to work with them just you, I hesitatingly use the word gently but you know we don't need to use a hatchet to encourage people to do something but just encourage them in different ways to be able to get to that point where they click send. And as you know, clicking send, it's like, it's gone, it's gone. And because everything is online these days, I suppose it's just like putting the stamp on the old envelope and walking it down to the mailbox. But yeah, clicking send is like, okay, it's out to the world, whether it's a newsletter or going out to the reporter or sending your, sending your, your book uh, manuscript off to the publisher, whatever it is, those are the kinds of things that, that we run into and I run into with my clients and that we work on all the time. Yeah, that was so well put. And I'll just say it reminds me of our great conversation too, that I, I think, you know, <laughs> Ukraine being on my mind too. And I, I, I think about this frame where we have so much leverage, if we can learn how to use it. And I know Tony Robbins uses this analogy where we have to, you know, understand our kind of powers and our things that make us um, that will connect us with the world. And sometimes the hardest part is just getting started, getting in that water, <laughs> so to speak, for the first time. And I think same with Ukraine, you know, we have so much leverage to put pressure on, you know, Russia and China. But if we, if we have the ability to use it, you know, so and I think you really need somebody else to teach you how to how to tease that out. It starts with mindset. And that's why I see you as such a great purpose-driven entrepreneur. I know Corey and I, we always, we, we, we almost exclusively connect with only purpose-driven entrepreneurs, 
but somebody like you who's supportive, who sees those gifts and can kind of get them started. I think that's the hardest part, but um, yeah, I know we're going a little bit deeper than we might, might need well, to. Can I, I, can I just, can I just add uh, something? Um, I didn't make up this mindset thing. Uh, Carol Dweck, D-W-E-C-K, is the author of the book um, Mindset. Came out a number of years ago, and I think there may have been some subsequent publishings. But she talks about two different kinds of mindset, uh, uh, fixed mindset and growth mindset. So fixed mindset in its very simplistic form is there's no way that'll work. Um, I can't do that. I don't have time for this. I really don't. I, I know I'll get to it. I just cannot handle it now. All those kinds of things are part of a fixed mindset where we're making excuses for, for not doing certain things. Growth mindset, the way I interpret it, is about when something comes up that you normally you might say, I can't do that, you'd go, hmm, how can I do that? So now what you're doing is applying curiosity. So a curious mindset. And if you, keep, if you get in that habit of asking yourself, what would happen if, or how, how could I do that? I don't feel I can, but what? What would happen if I could? How, how could I start going about that? That hmm, dot, dot, dot. Then that gets you into that growth state uh, where anything could be possible. Yeah, well put. Yeah. Corey, sorry to interject. No worries. <laughs> We're going a little <laughs> bit like the Roberto ripple Roberto and I sometimes <laughs> talk way too long, so um, <laughs> about lots of different things. Just, I've, yeah, there's don't a give it away. That, yeah, there's a quote that kind of came up recently for me. I guess I had it, you know, I posted it. I'm not sure who actually said it, but um, uh, so when given a choice, successful people will frequently choose one of the more difficult options versus going the easy route. And, and that's not always, you know, it doesn't mean that we seek difficulty, but we look for the challenge. And then, and that often, and the paradox is it often actually makes things easier, right? So, because the, the difficult actually makes us more skilled. And, and, uh, Although if I, may add, if I may add, Corey, in that what's difficult for one person might be easy for another. True. And all the, uh, vice versa. And that each of us sees challenges in a different way and or that they, can, they know it's not difficult, right. but they've got these blockages and things that are holding them back. And right. that's what makes it appear perhaps to be difficult. Right, and so when we choose to face it, then then we can start unwinding and, and see and become curious about how to um, to make it so. Otherwise, we could just choose the easy route, and you know, especially as entrepreneurs, just go get a job, right? <laughs> Sometimes that's not so easy either. Um, so, tell us a little bit about how marketing and branding has changed under COVID. This is, it's certainly something you've seen pretty drastic changes. Well yeah, some things have changed. And, and of course, like everything else in life, uh, some things haven't changed at all. I think the biggest change that I'm noticing is that one has to be nimble and ready to pivot on a dime. So um, a client of mine has her, her own uh, contact and client who had, has a, uh, had a brick and mortar business COVID came, everything just shut down. Their business, I mean, just they had to close the doors. Within 30 days, they were 100% digital, 100% online. And now that business is, is doing 300% more. Um, their revenue is up 300%. It's a startup from where they were before, before COVID. So we're always taught and told that we need to be nimble. COVID, I believe, has forced us more than turning on a dime now. We need, you know, we need to turn on a pinhead. But again, that gets back into mindset. And those who think, well, I can tough this out, maybe they succeeded, maybe they didn't. It's okay to tough things out and also to be looking ahead and seeing you know, what, what do we need to do? I recall, I think it was March the 7th, it was the Monday, it was, it was a week before we all shut down, I think. But we knew that COVID was, was, was the first or second week, week in March. And I had my Toastmasters meeting. I, I was president of the club and the night before on, on the Sunday night, I emailed everybody and, and I said, um, I think we're gonna have to go virtual. And crossing the email was an email from the, spawn, the sponsor, which happened to be uh, one of the Adobe buildings here in San Francisco where, who hosted our club. They're saying, Adobe is shutting down. So I said, okay, uh, we're going virtual folks. 
And one of my team members said, well, maybe not so fast. Maybe we should try and find another location. Okay, this is right in the, the first hours of COVID. And I was able to convince him at, to not do that. And I think his hesitancy was because he wasn't comfortable yet with Zoom. This came out afterwards, but everybody agreed. And then a few days later, the whole world was, was shut down. And we were right there on Zoom and we were actually the first club within our district in, in Toastmasters. And, and they were looking to us to, well, what did you do? How did you do it, et cetera, et cetera. So again, that gets into this mindset of whatever's coming your way, whether it's now as we're hopefully getting COVID almost in the rear view mirror, what now? Do, do we sit on the laurels? Never. So always be looking out for what, what you can do to deliver more, deliver better, over deliver on the promise, you know, make a promise and over deliver on the promise and, you know, and still do well uh, for your business. The things that haven't changed is that showing customers that you care, uh, showing them how available you are and that you really understand because not everybody's recovering in the same way and at the same rate. So we need, to, depending wh whether we have a, a B2C business or a B2B business, it, it really requires, I think, a different kind of understanding that we may have been willing to have prior to, prior to COVID. Right. Um, one thing that we always like to ask on this show, and it helps us understand kind of where you come from, and I know you touched on some of this, is kind of your why about why you do what you do. I, I just love this question. I love, I'm almost addicted to seeing transformations happen in my clients. And, oh, just yesterday, I was talking with a client about renewing. And he said, he said to me, I just want you to know that uh, my, my thinking has changed since we started working together. I said, really? He said, yeah, I'm sorry that I'm not very verbal and I haven't mentioned this to you. So, I mean, you can't make this up, right? Sometimes, sometimes people don't let us know. And yet sometimes we see very visible uh, manifestations of the work. So also yesterday, uh, a client of mine got a letter to the editor in the Boston Globe. Uh, a month ago, it was the San Francisco Chronicle, another client in, the, in New York Times. And in all of those cases, I'm suggesting to, my, to them, I see an opportunity, I say, hey, would you like, are you, are, you up for, are you up for writing a letter to the editor? That's usually the way I couch it. Are you up for writing a letter to the editor? And I'm here to help you. And so uh, we, we, we chat about the, the, um, the, the thesis, you know, what, what's your position to the, to the article that you're responding to? Because it's, it's a mini opinion piece, right? This is your thought leadership. And I help them tweak it up and boom, send it, uh, send it off and, and see what happens. So quite a few successes this past few, uh, this past month. I think one of the other big successes for my client, who's an angel investor, we never imagined when we started out with her that she would have this success. It, her mind, it wasn't even intention. When she first came to me, she had zero interest in writing articles. At the beginning of COVID, something happened and I suggested to her that she write about it and post it on LinkedIn. And, you know, just very cautiously, would you be willing to write up a few words? And she said, sure. Within a few days, she had drafted three articles. And since then, she's not only become a article, uh, writing article machine, she's seeing it so critical to her visibility. And now she's become a TechCrunch contributor, you know, a contributing uh, author. And TechCrunch is, is arguably you know, one of the, the, best, the, the biggest and most highly read uh, technical uh, tech, online tech publications. So why is this important? I showed her how to curate everything on LinkedIn and link to where she's been published because the idea was, you know, she wanted to get people interested in, in what she's doing, but as a result, she's an angel investor, right? So she funds startups. And as a result, hundreds of startups are coming to her now every year, pitching their startups. This hadn't happened before she started publishing and curating on LinkedIn. So sometimes you can get these results that you never intended, but let me tell you, I get up in the morning and it's like, ooh, what's next for this one? And 
it, it's just very exciting. And you know, I think all of you out there who have clients, there's always that, those clients that help put a spring in your step, in, including Mr. Corey, uh, not here. It's every time that something great happens for a client, it just makes my heart sing and gives me so much joy and makes me do a better job uh, to help them. Great. And I think you touch on something that really drives Corey and I as well is that when we start working with people, you see those changes and that transformation. And that's such a, an exhilarating thing for us and um, to see them succeed. And then it makes kind of us succeed. And I, I feel like we always learn something new or we actually succeed more when we see others succeed uh, with some of the ideas or help that we provide as well. And, and sometimes it's not anything profound. It's just an aha moment. You know, you can just see it in their eyes and they just sort of get it. And yeah, we can even see it on, on Zoom video. Um, it's, it's so rewarding, so gratifying. We're just about at time, but we wanted to close with, uh, in the two minutes we have left about who is your ideal client? Who are you looking to work with out there? So I'm looking to work with deep experts who want to be known as authorities in their field of expertise. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be all the way to writing a book, but somebody who's not satisfied with their visibility right now and know that either for themselves or for their business, that by doing some publishing, perhaps putting out a, a newsletter with, with ideas that are unique to you, uh, putting out some blog posts, maybe doing more, which is writing articles, getting on podcasts like this, putting out some video. Which I know you do as well, David, all of these kinds of things that can help you be more visible, being in touch with some media who are in your field and then becoming a, uh, a trusted source for them who they come back to you to, to quote you. Those are the kinds of people I really, really love working with who have an intention uh, to do that. So let's see, consultants, professional, professionals, I'm reading now, small business CEOs and executives in transition. Excellent. Well, I, hopefully we can keep in touch. I, I do um, really connect with what your story and what you do. And I, I think what you provide is a rare um, service in terms of that substantive type of marketing, which is something that I value more than anything, just because that's kind of my style too, um, coming from uh, just my background. But Corey, thanks for inviting her on. Do you have any closing thoughts before we um, and this first segment? Uh, not at this time, but uh, I hope that we can have you back on again because I think there's much more to explore. So. Yeah, well, yeah I, want to, I, I want to thank you both. Thank you, David. Well, first of all, thank you, Corey, for thinking to bring me on. And thank you, David, for offering this platform. And uh, if it's okay, I, I think there's some people I may be able to introduce to, to have on, on here as well. Absolutely. Because it's well, it's always a wonderful opportunity, it, not just to, to, be on, to be on a podcast, but when you answer these questions, it really forces you to think through uh, what, you know, what are your truths and, and to communicate them. And that's, uh, that's a fantastic exercise in itself. Yeah, I, I need to get the transcripts from all of the ones that David and I just do together, you know, because there's probably a lot in there that I should be, you know, putting together for you and for Gail. <laughs> yeah. well, thank you so much. Thank you, Roberta. Great. Well, Thank with you. that, we're going to close out this first segment of Quantum Leap. Corey and I are coming back on in a couple minutes to discuss some uh, key business items. So we'll see you back soon. And thanks, Roberta, again. Bye, everyone. <laughs>